Here is the Yom Yom for today. Today's the physical universe is a like a big cholent. It's a big mixture. The physical world. It's a meeting place where God meets together with man. Man is the choice of all creations. But it's also what's called a ginat aguz. It's called the garden of nuts. Such a thing in the world, a garden of nuts. Anyway, ginat aguz. This is the language of the Song of Songs. Why is it a called this world in King Solomon? The wisest of all men called this world a garden of nuts. Why? Because the word agos has the numerical value of sin. Huh? Let's let's check it out. Agos is take out your computers. One plus three plus six plus seven. So one plus three is four. Plus six is ten. Seventeen. 17. That's the gematria of agos. What's the numerical value of sin? Chet. Uh, did I count right? Three. Ah, I counted wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Terrible. I didn't have to take out my computer. <laughs> One and... No, right. One and three. That's 10. 17. Oh, and that's the numerical value of chet. But you have to add in the word. That's called imakolel. That's hate. Hate is also, that's 18. A sin is 18, but you have to add the word in there, which is permissible to do when you do gematrius. So a goes is 17 with the kolel is 18, and that's the numerical value of sin. Okay. So the world is a world of a, a garden of nuts. I mean, there's also, the world is filled with nuts. There's no doubt about that. I mean, just look at the United Nations. The world, the word agos also has the numerical value of sin. God gives us the capacity to choose freely. The world is called a garden of nuts. There was Alice in Wonderland. You ever see the movie? Alice in Wonderland, she goes through and there's all these little, you know, things growing up. Eat me, put the, the, the drink me, touch me. This. So you have the capacity to choose freely. You can choose freely. A person can choose if he wants to to make terrible mistakes in life, or he can choose the correct path in life. And a lot of times you can never really get the point. You have to have somebody to help you or some amazing miracle that changes. It. And God makes the miracles that people get on the right path. But it's possible for a person to be in our incarnations one after the other and just get involved in the garden of nuts, of the nuts, and forget about the garden part of it, the goodness. So that's what the world is. The world is a place where we have free choice and God makes the choice equal and opposite. Now let's do tomorrow. So if you find yourself doing sins and doing terrible things, so you should know that it's a setup. It's a setup that God set us up and he put us in this place where, <clears throat> where it's very, very, uh, do you say, easy to do, to make mistakes. So therefore, it's very easy to be forgiven because you say, okay, God, I made big mistakes, I admit it, but you, you know, we're partners in this business, right? You were the one to set me up. And God says, yeah, yeah, you're right, 100%. Yeah, that's, you, you, you got it. Coming back to your senses, that's what I want. Next, that was today, tomorrow. The world is in need of purified, clean air. Clean air comes only through the words of the Torah. Words of the Torah offer protection in general and for each individual in particular. So they talk about global warming and things like that, but that's the big danger. I don't know, it could be, but says the Rebbe, our job is, is to clean the world. You know, they, 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 they'll make the, you know, the World Economic Forum or something like that. They'll make it that nobody uh, you know, emits anything anymore. There's no, no more. Everybody just breathes in. You won't breathe out. It's going to be forbidden to breathe out. No one reads out. Okay, but whatever you want to do so that the world will be pure, it's not going to be pure because the only thing to really purify the air is the words of Torah. Words of Torah. And for each individual in particular. <clears throat> you know, the, the bad thing about all these big plans that they have in the United Nations is that there's no real value system. There's no values. If every man becomes the measure of all things, 
then there's no value system. Eventually, people are going to opt out that they, you know, who needs a family? It's just a bunch of problems. Just trouble. The kids, you know, they you have to change their diapers and they smell bad. And the kids, and they make noise at night. You know, who needs it? <clears throat> so everybody's just going to be, you know, for themselves, everything. And that 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 is the Tower of Bavel. That's the whole idea of the Tower of Bavel. It's just pure egotism. And egotism is self-destruction. <clears throat> okay. So it says, how do we purify the world through words of Torah? The words of Torah purify the air in a sense that where does the Torah come from? The word of the word from our creator. So people remind themselves that they're a creator, that they themselves are not God, that there's a creator that's creating us, and the creator gave the Torah. And the Torah has a whole value system, which is the creator's value system, not ours. So we have to say the words of Torah, the division of the six orders of the Mishnah for memorizing. This is when you walk on the road, one Mishnah or two, if you say it by memory, wherever you are, in whatever place you are, this will illuminate the bond between Israel and God. The letters for Mishnah are neshama, soul. It is very difficult to find the words to express the tremendous benefit with God's help in general and even the individual protection and blessing that you get that if you repeat, Mishnah will bring. And there are no words to describe the tremendous gratification that you give to God when you say Mishnah walking through the streets. Okay, have a, what's a no, story, story. <clears throat> 